your wake-up call for uh, your Kent 225 class for February 1st. Here's the outline for today's class. So this first part we're going to be reviewing the force velocity curve and muscle fiber types and then in subsequent parts I'll talk about types of muscle contractions that include isotonic, isokinetic, isometric, concentric and eccentric contractions. So some review questions around the force velocity curve. So this first question asks which part of the force velocity curve would be most affected if you increase the number of actin and myosin myofilaments filaments in your muscle. So you gotta think of the type of training that would most likely increase the number of those uh, contractile proteins, your actin and myosin. The answer would be, you know, the traditional kind of moderate to, to high intensity resistance training that is usually done at, uh, at lower velocities. So the most likely part of this curve that would improve is your force output at low velocity, so out at point A. So that's how your curve would probably look uh, if you've increased the number of actin and myosin and myofilaments in your muscle. So you get stronger at those slower contraction velocities. Next question asks about which part of the force velocity curve would most likely be, be affected if you had a shift from type 2A to type 2X muscle fibers. So that's a shift from your intermediate to your fastest type of muscle fibers. The point that would most likely improve here would be out at point C. So you would get an increase in your maximal velocity uh, at low force outputs. So that's how your curve would look, the dotted line, if you had an increase from type of, of type 2X fibers, uh, so a shift from type 2A to type 2X. And the last part, question here asks, on what part of the force velocity curve would you have the greatest power output? Now power, uh, if I can draw an equation here, power is equal to the product of your force times velocity. So it's determined by both force and velocity. So if you think about this force velocity curve, as you get towards these really high velocities, you're able to generate these high velocities because the force is very low. So it's easier to move a light load faster than it is a heavier load. And then your contraction force increases as you go towards zero velocity. Uh, so if you think that power is equal to force times velocity, out here you have really high velocity, but you have very low force. So that's getting towards zero force, which by this equation, you know, if you have zero in one of these uh, variables, then your power is going to be zero. Same thing out here. You can have a very high force output out here but zero velocity. So out here at point A, your power would be you know, close to zero. And in this case, it's because your uh, velocity is close to zero. So the correct answer here would probably be B. It would be you know, at a moderate velocity and moderate force output. That's where your optimal power output would be. couple of practice questions here to do with fiber typing. So the first one, when I take my dog for a walk or run, at the start of the walk, she's pulling hard and I have trouble keeping up to her. And then after about 10 minutes, it's the reverse. So she's dragging herself and I'm ahead and I'm pulling her by the leash. So based on the dog's performance, how do you think her muscle fiber types differ in her, her legs from mine? And then uh, to explain your answer. So the differences here would be that the dog would have more faster type fibers and uh, the human would have more slower type fibers. 
So the faster fibers allow you to go fast at the start of this walk, but the fast fibers are have a characteristic in that they get fatigued very easily. So, you know, by the last part of the walk after 10 minutes, those fast fibers are fatigued and your slow fibers are now uh, predominantly active. And that allows the person with a, the human with a, a greater amount of slow twitch fibers um, to be ahead at that point in time. So the dog is fast at the start of the walk because she's got more fast twitch fibers. Um, but after about 10 minutes, she's slower because those fast twitch fibers are more fatigable. So they've become fatigued. The second question, an individual suffers a spinal cord injury that results in lower leg paralysis. After three months of paralysis, they start a training program where their legs are, uh, the muscles in their legs are electrically stimulated. So this is often used in rehab uh, and to, main, to maintain muscle mass in people that have, um, you know, paralyzed limbs. The question here is what would their fiber type composition change or how would their fiber type composition change immediately following paralysis and then during their training program? So the catch here is that anytime you have disuse of a muscle, so anytime you stop using your muscle, it tends to shift towards a faster fiber type. And then when you start using it again, it shifts towards a slower fiber type. So if I was going to guess the fiber type shifts here, um, you know, from uh, the time the person suffers the spinal cord injury till three months later, you would probably have a shift towards a faster fiber type. So you'd see almost a disappearance of their type ones. They would shift towards type two A and, uh, and then type two X, um, you know, to the extreme shift. So this is the shift you'd get with um, paralysis and disuse. And then once this person starts receiving uh, electrical stimulation to their leg muscles, then you know their legs would be uh, training more and you get a shift towards a slower fiber type. So with the electrical stimulation. So you stop using a muscle, shifts towards a faster fiber type. You start using the muscle more, it shifts back to a slower fiber type. 